Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about friendships and how to create long lasting meaningful relationships. So if you guys are interested, please keep watching. So the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because um, I have a friend that I've been friends with since around fourth or fifth grade. Um, I met her through Japanese school and around sixth grade she moved to Japan and then um, she was there for a long time and then I think around five years ago um, she moved back to America. She moved to the San Francisco area and I also moved to Southern California. So, um, you know, we've been friends this whole time and I just realized that we've been friends for 25 years this year and um, she's actually visiting uh, this coming week. I thought why not make a video about this and about why um, I believe I was able to keep um, a relationship for so long. So if you guys are interested in that, in that, yes, um, I feel like you came to the wrong place or you came to the right place. <laughs> so um, a little bit about me in general when it comes to friendships. Um, since I was young, I didn't have a lot of friends, but I had a small number of close friends. So throughout, you know, elementary school, junior high, high school, I had probably only like two or three really close friends. And in Japanese school, um, I had a, a group of um, like five or six really close friends that I would hang out with all the time. And, you know, I just I, I think I actually spent more time with my Japanese school friends than I did with my um, American school friends. And in college as well, I think I had around like probably around five or six like close friends, I would say. Um, but unfortunately, um, I kept I lost touch with most of them except for um, I'm gonna call her Kay, um, who um, I've kept a relationship with this long and also another friend from American school, which I also still keep in touch with pretty regularly. And as a grown up, after uh, giving birth to children, I think I only had about like, I think I only had two really close friends. And since moving to Southern California four years ago, I only have, I only made one really close friend. And I have met other people, but I feel like I haven't developed a relationship deep enough to call them my friends. They're just kind of like my acquaintances or um, just church members that I attend church with and small group with. Um, so yeah, that's my background in terms of friendship. But I really believe in quantity over quality of friendships. And I think the reason why um, I was not able to keep the relationship with um, my other friends back in elementary school, junior high, and college is because I never really developed a really deep relationship with them um, or a real trust or bond with them, unfortunately. I wish I have, but um, thankfully I do have a few friends here as well as my husband, who is my best friend, um, who I can really trust and talk to um, about my feelings, what's going on. I think the number one way to create or to start a really deep relationship is to um, open up about your concerns or what you're going through or your feelings. And I think with my older friends from when I was young, you know, um, since we've been friends for so long and we just kept in touch, um, it's something that we just developed naturally. But sometimes it is hard to open up to somebody um, especially if you just met them or you don't know them well. And I, I hear a lot of times um, from people who live in California, like YouTubers and all these people that they have a hard time like really trusting people. And I totally understand that because you, you don't really know a person for real until you experience something sometimes. But for me personally, um, with a friend that I made here, I'm gonna call her H, um, we've been just really, um, just casually, you know, talking to each other because our children got along. And one day I just, yeah, and I just felt like, you know, maybe this is the person that I can be a friend with for real um, because I just felt really comfortable around her. And um, a lot of times the problem that I have is because I am shy and kind of introverted, um, you know, it's not easy for me to, you know, keep a conversation going on a lot of times unless I feel like I really click with that person. And with H, I felt like I really was able to just keep talking about things um, over and over without even like thinking. And um, when we're talking, there were no gaps, no awkward gaps. And even if there was a little gap, it, it didn't feel awkward to me. Um, so I was like, you know what, maybe it's time that, you know, I kind of open up and, um, you know, call, start 
being able to define the relationship as being friends. So um, one day I was having a concern um, with this other mom and I wasn't trying to create gossip. I was literally really genuinely having this concern and I wanted to share it with somebody and I felt like she was the one that I could share with. And the thing about her is that I really, I really like the way that she thinks, especially when it comes to uh, relationships and um, children. So I just naturally um, felt like it was time and she was the right person that I can talk to about. And thankfully, um, she took it in the right way. She was happy that um, I opened up to her. And from then on, I feel like, you know, we've been, we've became really close. And even after um, almost four years, yeah. Um, and we, our kids go to different schools, we still meet and we're able to still have nice conversations. The number one thing I think is to open up. Um, if you believe and if you feel like you can trust that person, go ahead and open up to that person first and hopefully that person will replicate that um, friendship to you as well. And I think the number two thing that has helped me keep my relationships um, uh, strong is to keep in touch. Um, and I think this is so important. Um, like, like I said, um, Kay, I met in fifth, fourth or fifth grade and she moved to Japan in fifth grade or sixth grade. But throughout this whole time, through that, throughout that whole time that she was in Japan, we always email each other. You know, back then we didn't have text messaging. So we would always email each other. We would always write letters. And to this day, those letters are so precious to me. Those letters that she sent me, um, are so precious. And unfortunately, my mom threw them away. I was so angry at her when she did that because she didn't even ask me, but um, I'm like crying thinking about it. <laughs> we would write letters to each other like every month. Every time she would write me back, I would write her back all the time. And after that, you know, um, we were able to kind of text a little bit, which was more convenient. And whenever I went back to Japan, I would just make sure that I always met her and uh, we would spend time together. And also with my other friend from uh, American school, even though we don't talk a lot, I do, we do um, text each other um, randomly, randomly here and there just to see how we're doing. And, you know, she really tells me what she's going through and I try to do the same. And I feel like, you know, when I do go back um, to where she is, which is our hometown, I feel like, you know, we can still keep, um, the relationship and we can kind of you know start talking where we left off and um i know that a lot of times um especially if you're away um and you meet after a long time even though you are close friends sometimes there are moments or times or chapters in life when you feel like you are a little bit different you feel like, oh, maybe I don't really need to talk to this person anymore. Like you just feel like that person is so much different now or they're just not in the same chapter of life with you. It is sometimes really easy to lose that relationship and just kind of like forget about it. But um, I felt like, you know, because we were friends for so long and we shared a lot of like good memories and everything, I felt like, you know, I have to kind of just endure that, <laughs> if that makes sense. Personally went through this with um, Kay um, and my other friends too, um, especially because I was a young, pretty young mom. I became a mom when I was 23 and everyone else basically, um, were still, you know, they were just still single and they were just like, you know, excited about life and starting an independent life and working and meeting more like new people, but I had already settled. So, um, a lot of times I would just feel like, you know, oh, maybe I should just, you know, find new friends, but, um, those friends that I have been keeping relationships, for some reason I was able to keep them because um, I just feel, felt like it was worth keeping that relationship, if, if that makes sense. And I'm glad I did. Even though I felt different at the time, I feel like now we're able to share more experiences together, if that makes sense. Because um, I became a mom early, but she kept working, um, but Kay kept working. So she knows a lot about work and um, about, you know, just, she knows a lot about human relationships because she has worked and has been dealing with so many people for way longer than I have. So I feel like, you know, because I was able to keep that relationship, we can really um, help each other out, encourage each other and share um, our experiences and what we think about just daily life. And my third um, piece of advice or tip is to embrace your differences. 
Um, I know that a lot of times, especially when you're young, you feel like, oh, this person is my friend, this person is my boyfriend, or I, I can get along with this person because we have so much in common. But um, throughout the years, I realized that we are very two different people. Um, I feel like, you know, um, I'm more conservative may, may, uh, about many things. She's more liberal about many things, but that didn't stop us from building and keeping our relationship. And I think it is because we were able to embrace the differences and trust each other, knowing that, you know, we're not judging each other. Um, I think that is very important. Um, and the good thing about having a good friend that is um, different from you is that you're able to really share um, different opinions. So, you know, you might feel um, a certain way about something, but then she'll express her opinion, which is totally the opposite of what you feel. And it makes you start thinking like, oh, maybe there is that kind of perspective. And um, when you have that kind of friend where you can share um, a meaningful conversation with different opinions, I feel like that helps you become um, a more open-minded person. And it also helps you to make a more cohesive um, decision on whatever it is that you're worried about or whatever. Um, just embracing your differences and being respectful of your friend, um, even though they might think differently or um, feel a different way from you. My fourth tip, um, it's definitely not the last that you may find elsewhere, but is to express your real thoughts and concerns for your friend. Um, and this is not because you are trying to be harsh or mean or to hurt that person. Um, just showing your concern, speaking out your concern instead of always agreeing with your friend, I think really shows that you care and that you love that friend and that um, you're just building trust with that friend. And your friend may not agree with you. Your friend may get upset with you at the moment, but there may come a time when your friend says, thank you so much for telling me your true feelings. Thank you so much for showing your concern for me. So for example, um, my friend was dating a guy and um, I really felt like he was, he just didn't seem like the right guy. Like he didn't seem like a guy that would treat her right. And I was like, oh no, I know that you really love him, but I really think that you shouldn't continue this relationship because, um, you know, blah. And at first, you know, I felt a little hesitant to, to tell her that, but because I really cared for her, I felt that I should tell her this. And later on, she told me, thank you so much for, you know, telling me that because all my other friends said that, you know, I should continue this relationship because you love him. And she was saying that you're the only friend that told me that. Um, and, I, and I'm really thankful. I'm not saying that you should um, express your feelings to your friend to prove that you're right. It's just to show genuine concern and love for your friend. And trust me, um, if you do that, um, you will build the trust with your friend. It should be out of genuine love and concern, not to show any, not for any other reason. And um, if you're worried about, um, you know, how your friend might react, um, I would just go ahead and be like, um, you know, this is really hard for me to say because it might hurt your feelings, but I am really concerned about this and I'm thinking of you. And I think this is really important because for me personally, I don't want a friend um, that's just gonna always agree with me. I want a friend that will really take my um, concerns or whatever seriously and give me really sound advice. So I don't think that just agreeing or um, always encouraging is um, a, a good friendship, if that makes sense. And I think this applies for even marriage as well. Like I want somebody that can actually tell me, hey, you know what? You need to calm down and think about this because <laughs> I feel like that's, the love and I learned throughout my years um, being an adult I feel like a lot of times people don't really really care about you um, unfortunately and sometimes they'll just be like yeah 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 go ahead go ahead but then the people who really care about you will so and those are my four tips for um, creating long-lasting meaningful relationships um, if you enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up like um, comment and subscribe and please let me know um, if you'd like me to do more videos like this. Okay guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!